moment yesterday. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I had a moment yesterday where um, I lost my screen. I'm going to be very sensitive in that way, but I wonder, AJ, um, if you could just have the PowerPoint up as backup, just in case we need you to screen share, that would be wonderful. I am really hopeful that I will not be so exciting with my hands, but just yeah. one Got it up and ready. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are here together uh, for the Decadal Management Review Ocean Governance Community Meeting. Uh, my name is Kelly here with Strategic Earth, and we will be inviting the department to start momentarily. We're just going to invite a few more folks through the waiting room journey, um, and we'll get started in just a moment. And I think what I will do is just in the spirit of support here, Becky, I will share my screen. Fabulous. Thank you. Course, and just make sure that you're seeing the right one. You're seeing the presentation, correct? I am. Wonderful. And then I'm just going to pull up the chat so I can see that over here. And I'm going to pull up the participants list, which is wonderful. And then I'm going to present this again. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining today. Um, we'll get started in just a moment. And um, for those that are joining, we are here together to talk about the Decadal Management Review, um, the Ocean Governance Community Meeting here today, appreciating that some may align with that description in terms of your organizational or affiliation. Others may be here with other affiliations. We welcome everyone. This is a public meeting. Everyone is welcome. Just acknowledging that the focus of the conversations today are intended to be around ocean governance. Um, Becky, just acknowledging here, uh, I think that we might be able to, to start. So let's get started and we can continue welcoming folks as they arrive. Great. Thank you, Kelly. And, um, and Kelly, did you have a chance to co-host? Oh, just, it just went through. Thank you so much. Just of course, to Deb, not Barbara a problem at all. Really Great. appreciate you pausing us and please yeah. do so at any time. We're, we're here. Thank you. Uh, Becky, please go right ahead. Thank you, Kelly. So uh, welcome everybody again. You're here at the uh, Ocean Governance Community meeting on the Marine Protected Areas Decadal Management Review. And we're very, very appreciative of you guys taking your time out this afternoon to join this webinar. And I am Becky Oda. I am with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Marine Region and the Habitat Conservation Program Manager within that marine region. Um, responsible for the management of the MPAs for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So we're here today to share information about the Marine Protected Areas Decadal Management Review Report and the drafting of that report, and in, which is anticipated to be released and delivered to the Fish and Game Commission in late 2022 or early 2023. And we're also here to hear and receive your feedback on the upcoming Decadal Management Report and while the focus of today's discussion is on that review, the management review and the written report, all your feedback is valuable information for us to better understand your perspectives. We'd also like to highlight that detailed conversations and requests about specific proposed changes to a marine protected area or to the protect, marine area, uh, protected areas network, excuse me, should also be provided directly to the Fish and Game Commission who has the authority to address those um, those issues and we'll do so after the report is received by them. The series of webinars that we've had, the four webinars are designed to be audience specific in an effort to ensure the conversation is focused and relevant to all participants' perspectives and interests. And recordings of our previous three meetings and this one um, will be available upon request and will be posted on the department's website in the coming weeks, hopefully as soon as the end of this month. We've heard from some of you that the nomenclature used to describe these meetings when they were advertised didn't really resonate with you and that the link to the webinars seemed to be hidden. That was not our intent. Our goal was really to be inclusive while honoring the diversity of the ocean related interests in California and, and having the meetings <clears throat> really audience specific. Then at the end of the meeting, there is an optional survey 
that we would love for you and welcome you to stay a little bit to, to provide feedback on how best to organize these kinds of meetings in the future. Next slide, Kelly. It is you, Kelly, right? Changing slides. <laughs> um, so just not gonna go through everybody's names, but just wanted to point out that we have a, a great team today helping with um, providing information and answering questions and getting your feedback. Uh, we have folks from the Department of Fish and Wildlife, Ocean Protection Council, and of course, Strategic Earth. So they will introduce themselves uh, when they get in, when you get into breakout groups a little later. Um, so look for their names and their faces when you have a chance. Next slide. So just a bit of logistics first. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and closed caption. Uh, if you have any difficulties viewing the screen, uh, share or calling in, uh, you can uh, email Avery uh, at this email or send a message in the chat and Strategic Earth will help you, um, help you get untangled in those techn technical difficulties. Um, for speaking to unmute, raise your hand. Um, and um, uh, the, Zoom, the Zoom and the smartphone guides are gonna be put in the chat to help you troubleshoot through things. So um, because there's a large, volume of participants, all participants are muted until they're unmuted by the facilitator. And again, to, to, to speak, just raise your hand and click accept when the message says the host would like to unmute you. And then to help identify yourself and other participants, if you haven't done it already, is to please identify yourself in the participant section um, with your name, <clears throat> where you can locate your name, click on more and choose rename, uh, enter your first and last name and an identifier of who you're affiliated with would be great. Anything I missed there, Kelly, or others? Closed caption to turn on subtitles, you can click CC in the meeting controls below. And then the gallery view up above will enable you to see more, more than one speaker. Okay, I think that's good, next slide. Um, some meeting agreements. Uh, I'd like to put yourself on mute when not speaking. Um, the, you, as I said, you will be muted, but minimize distractions and, and noises that will help. Uh, listen for understanding, acknowledge and seek clarifications of others' perspectives and verify assumptions. Openly discuss issues with others who hold diverse views. Approach discussions from a place of diversity and inclusion and considering voices and perspectives of each of the members' respective constituencies and organizations. Keep comments concise and focused on the topic at hand. We have a lot of people today, so we would like to hear from everyone. Um, personal attacks and offensive language will not be tolerated. Um, and connecting with facilitators or agencies to talk through questions or concern is what we would like you to do. We ask everyone to abide by these agreements. And if you're unable to, we will invite you to leave today's meeting and watch the recording that will be posted in the coming days to learn more and um, email your input to the Department of Fish and Wildlife. If there is anyone who cannot abide by the agreements, uh, please message Kelly in the chat. Okay, go ahead, Kelly, thanks. So the agenda today, we've gone through our welcome and some logistics on how to deal with controls and how, how to get help on that. Um, there'll be a presentation on the MPA management program and the decadal management review. We will then break out into um, community discussions. We'll walk through a number of questions that the department has that will help inform our drafting of the decadal management review. We will also move in, it will move into those breakout rooms to do that. Um, there will also be a chance in the breakout rooms for any questions that you might have on the presentation. Then we'll look ahead and look at the timeline again and walk through some next steps and engagement opportunities. Um, we'll do um, adjourn and we will end at three o'clock. Anything else in the chat that I need to address, Kelly? Are we good? Okay. Sorry, I, I don't know if you can see me. I was giving the thumbs up, but I, I think oh. we're in great shape. Thank you so much. Sorry. No, no, I, don't be sorry at all. You're great. I can say it out loud. I'm here. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I couldn't see you. Um, okay, next slide. So again, I'll be sharing how the state is gonna be managing um, California's protected areas network uh, since the implementation in 2012 and provide an update on the 10 year review of the network, including but not limited to goals, uh, the process and anticipated outcomes. Um, you will all have that opportunity to share your thoughts and feedback as I mentioned in the breakout rooms following the presentation 
you'll be able to ask questions there about the presentation, but then also uh, provide feedback on the questions we have for you. Um, for many of you, I, I think looking at the names, this information is going to sound very familiar. So bear with me. Um, we want to make sure that we are orienting everybody who may not be as familiar. So those of you who have been very involved, just, um, just patience and, and bear with me. Um, but before we jump into the presentation at hand, I'd like to address some concerns about um, that we've heard about the decadal management review and the 30 by 30 biodiversity process. Um, the decadal management review is, is not part of the 30 by 30 process. They are separate processes. Um, the MPA network along with other existing areas of protection within the state will be contributing to that effort, but we did not incorporate any of that 30 by 30 process in the decadal management review. So just wanted to, to make that that, um, that point before we moved on, because we've heard a lot of, of questions and concerns about that. Okay, next slide. So for a lot of you who know, and those who may not know or remember, California's network of marine protected areas was implemented following the passage of the Marine Life Protection Act in 1999. It required the redesign of California's existing marine protected areas to function as an ecologically connected network. The statewide network is designed to provide ecosystem protections, increase recreational and educational activities, promote scientific research and rebuild and protect populations of marine species. The network planning occurred through a sequential series of four regional public science-based stakeholder driven planning processes from 2004 to 2012 with implementation occurring from 2007 to 2012 and the completion of the entire network in late 2012. A review of the network and the management program is required by the Marine Life Protection Act. And in 2016, the Master Plan for Marine Protected Areas established a 10-year formal management review cycle for the MPA network and the implementation of the MPA management program. The first review will focus on exactly that, the MPA management program and progress of the network towards meeting the goals of the Marine Life Protection Act. The review will conclude in late 2022 or early 23, when the department presents a report to the California Fish and Game Commission. That, at that time, at that commission meeting, it is not an adoption hearing, nor is the commission gonna be expected to take any immediate formal action at their meeting. Rather, the commission will consider the content, the findings and recommendations in the review, and will decide whether to direct the department and implementation partners to pursue recommendations or next steps identified as we go further into uh, 2023. And for more information about the whole history of the MPA network and the process, um, all of that is available at the website at the bottom of the screen. And I believe that's gonna go in the chat as well. Next slide. So the MPA management program that I've mentioned a couple of times is composed of four pillars, outreach and education, research and monitoring, enforcement and compliance, and policy and permitting. And these four pillars are very common for a lot of management of MPAs globally. And the review and the corresponding evaluations of progress towards meeting the goals of the act will focus on each one of these four pillars. Next slide, please. So the review will consider multiple sources of monitoring data and Regional baseline monitoring established a comprehensive benchmark of ecological and socioeconomic conditions at or near the time of regional MPA implementation and serves as a point of comparison against which future conditions can be measured. So when each region was completed, the baseline monitoring work was started and it progressed as each region was finished. Statewide long-term monitoring builds on the knowledge, capacity, and needs informed by baseline monitoring and data collection in prioritized ecosystem and human uses. And the key habitats within the ecosystems that are included and being covered is rocky intertidal, kelp forest and shallow rocky reef, deep rocky reef, sandy beach and surf zone, estuaries, human uses, human uses including commercial and party boats, and the department is working on recreational data as well, and oceanographic MPAs and ocean conditions. 
The review will also consider overall connectivity of the network, especially in terms of larval dispersal as determined by advanced computer modeling techniques. Enforcement of MPAs, including number of citations and violation information will be included in the report as well as information from partners like California State Parks and MPA Watch, Collaborative Network, who collect data that complements the MPA management program. Also included will be projects funded by the state and projects conducted by partner agencies and organizations. Next slide, please. So in addition, utilizing the Marine Protected Area Monitoring Action Plan, which can also be found on our website, three science advisory work group, working groups were convened to provide input on the review and to help us with that report. The Decadal Evaluation Working Group provided a list of science-based performance evaluation questions and metrics to detect trends and overall progress towards MLPA goals in 2022 and beyond. The Climate Resiliency Working Group provided detailed recommendations on how California's MPA network could help buffer both ocean and human life from some effects of climate change. And those reports, the links to those reports can be found in the chat. Finally, the National Center for Ecological Analysis and Synthesis is tasked with completing an integrative analysis of MPA monitoring data collected to date that will also be incorporated into the Decadal Management Review Report. And the department is currently developing, developing a resource document that summarizes the long-term monitoring projects and the work of the science advisory working groups. And that will be posted on the DFW website, hopefully should be by the end of this week. So watch for that. Next slide, please. Thank you. So the department, we're preparing this technical report and informative update for the Fish and Game Commission that includes recommendations for adaptive management, as I mentioned, in all four focal areas of management program. And we'll use results from monitoring projects that will include comparisons between baseline and the long-term data, as I've mentioned. We will be working closely with California Native American tribes on the tribal content that is appropriate to be putting in the report. We will be working closely, I'm sorry, we'll input from stakeholders and partners and the feedback, which is part of what we're doing in these webinars, input from our law enforcement division, permitting programs and fisheries projects will also be a part of it. Guidance from those external science advisory teams. As I mentioned, the report will also identify knowledge gaps and additional questions to consider under each focal area, as well as inform monitoring strategies moving forward. All of which will ultimately result in adaptive management recommendations to the commission regarding the MPA network. Again, as another reminder, that at that commission meeting, when they receive the report, it is not an adoption hearing, nor will the commission expect to take any formal action, but will be just the beginning of the discussion and decision-making as we move forward. Clear statements describing the extent to which California's MPA network is or is not making progress toward the MLP goal, MLPA goals will be included in the report a framework for translating lessons learned from performance evaluation results to recommended adaptive management actions, summary of those actions taken to engage tribes in the ocean community and feedback leading up to and during the review, as well as future steps to follow up on feedback. And then following that December 2022 or 23 meeting, um, as I mentioned, there'll be just the beginning of the discussion on where we go from here and the strategies and recommendations to move forward. Next slide. So the slide provides an overview of the timeline moving forward. And thanks to very helpful feedback and insights shared during the first two and, and the third community meeting, we have attempted to clarify the Decatur Management Review timeline, including opportunities for community engagement. So in the fall of this year, um, we are doing these community meetings. Um, and then next week on November 9th, the Marine Resources Committee meeting, the Fish and Game Commission, um, is meeting and there is a decadal management review update on their agenda. And we will be discussing and talking about the timeline of the DMR, um, the submission of the report. So there'll be more discussion about this timeline next week with the Marine Resources Committee. So we encourage you if you're interested to, to join that meeting. Uh, that information for how you join the Marine Resources Committee can be found on the Fish and Game Commission's website. 
Um, it's very easy to find and they can explain, they will explain to you how you join that meeting on the 9th of November. Then later, um, we are going to be um, having a Decatur Management Review Tribal Community, community Meeting, excuse me, um, late uh, this year. And then early in 2022, the long-term monitoring projects that I mentioned earlier will be available for public review. Um, and uh, those activities since 2012. Throughout 2022, um, we are developing the Decadal Management Review Report, incorporating all of this information. We'll be exploring fees the feasibility of webinars on the long-term monitoring reports. And we'll be getting, uh, giving updates for the Fish and Game Commission and their subcommittees throughout the year as they have, um, as we get information or as they have requested, which is another way for everyone to engage. Then late 2022, early 23, the department will present the final Cato Management Review Report to the Fish and Game Commission. Uh, there's plans to have a public symposium and then um, also comments and opportunity for engagement at those committee meetings. Um, Additional in 2023, we'll continue to work with the commission uh, with regards to the findings and the recommendations um, and for them to direct the department's actions or ongoing public engagement and opportunities. Next slide. Well, could you, I'm sorry, could you go back one slide? I forgot to point out something important. Is that possible? Oops, sorry, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention over on the left side of the slide, um, any additional questions and comments can also be submitted anytime to this um, email address that you see on the screen. And it can also go in the chat. I'll mention it again at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, at the end of the meeting. Uh, but this is a place for you to ask questions. If you'd like to seek uh, additional um, conversations with us. That's where you'd ask us for that. So wanted to point that out. I'm sorry, I didn't, I forgot to do that. Okay, now next slide. So thank you for listening. And that concludes the presentation on the MPA management program. A lot of information packed in a very short period of time. We realized um, that's why we wanted to make sure you had all the links to all the information where you could read up on the things that have happened so far. Um, so at this time, we'd like to transition into the regionally focused or smaller group discussions to talk through some of the, the questions um, or topical questions and hear from you about your perspective and concerns, ask questions about the presentation. Um, and each room will have a staff member from the Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Ocean Protection Council, as well as a facilitator and note taker from Strategic Earth. So with that, Kelly, I will turn it back over to you guys. That sounds wonderful, Becky. Thank you so, so much. So we'd love to provide some support to transition everyone into these small group discussions. Um, maybe what I'll share is that we have created space at the front end of the small group conversations to address any clarifying questions that you may have on the presentation that Becky shared over the last little bit. Um, there will be, as, as Becky mentioned, a department staff member um, in each or multiple in each of the breakout rooms. So just know that there'll be an opportunity there. And then also want to acknowledge, and I'll just make my way um, through a few slides. I might do them a little bit, um, a little bit of a different order, um, that the breakout rooms themselves, as Becky mentioned, are oriented regionally. And we want to acknowledge that we appreciating today's conversations focused on ocean governance that we may have, and I think we do have uh, participants here that have joined who maybe don't fit in within a governance, you know, particular um, organization or affiliation. And many of you may not be sp working specifically to a, a particular part of the coast. There may be folks that are working really, you know, statewide or across regions. The reason why we've oriented this regionally is to help us really get some you know, great feedback and, and intel and information from um, folks around what priorities are regionally. However, we would encourage you all to choose the region that feels best for you. And you are more than welcome to talk about 
whether statewide or outside of that region, perspectives and priorities in your group. So please don't feel limited in any way. Um, as I skip through here, we have these questions. They were included in the agenda that was circulated to those that RSVP'd. If you didn't happen to RSVP, just know we'll walk through these questions you know, together. The first question, that clarifying question overall, and the next kind of moving through your priorities, um, conversations around goals and success, how you'd like your community to play, what role you might look, want your community to play in um, the marine management program moving forward, then any final reflections. We are um, providing a little bit of guidance around the breakout room experience. So appreciating that we have just about 80 people on the call today, that we would encourage everyone to use the raise hand um, function, which is in your reactions button. Um, we'll talk about that as anybody needs any um, help, let us know. And then a facilitator will add you to the queue and invite you to speak. You're also more than welcome to send your comment directly to, via chat to the facilitator in each group. And again, uh, it's strategic earth team member, we will identify ourselves in each group, and you can send us a note, and then we can read that comment or question out loud, and also make sure it's captured in the notes. And then finally, we really um, invite and encourage everyone to really acknowledge the group that you're in, um, the diverse perspectives and voices that may be coming through, and respectfully request if you could limit your question to one at a time so we could hear multiple voices. And then, of course, um, if there's a, a, a break in questions and you have additional questions to ask, um, we would welcome those, but just wanting to create, create space for everyone. Uh, let me just look through here. So what's going to happen is Avery, with all of their magic, are going to in ultimately launch the breakout rooms. If you're on a computer, you should see um, a breakout room um, uh, icon. You might have to hit more if you have too many icons along the bottom, and then it will pop up to breakout rooms. If you're on a smartphone, in the upper left-hand corner, there should be, again, those four little squares for breakout rooms. And then you have the opportunity, in our case, we're going to have room one, two, and three identified as north, central, and south. You have the opportunity to choose the breakout room that you want to go to. If you're having any trouble, Rochelle will be here with you in sort of the plenary room, in the group room, and will be able to move you individually. We just thank you very much for your patience. We've allocated time up front um, where we won't get into the discussion right away so everybody can make their way into the breakout rooms. And then finally, sorry to bounce around a little bit, but I'll just say that for those that maybe aren't as familiar with the regions in California in how the MPA management program is sort of oriented, uh, there are three regions, North Coast, which is from the border of Oregon. Oh, I haven't said this. I'm looking at another screen. If you see me looking off, I, that's what I'm looking at. Sorry to not say that out loud. Um, from the border of Oregon to San Francisco Bay is considered the North Coast. From San Francisco Bay to Point Conception is considered the Central Coast. And then from Point Conception south to the Mexican border is, um, is for the, the South Coast. I'm just looking through here. Oh, perfect. Rochelle on the chat is just clarifying that um, as we go, uh, which is so wonderful. So I will pause there and I will check in to see if there are any clarifying questions from the project team, department, OPC, strategic earth, anything I missed? I think so. Okay. And then I will stop the screen share because I think that might be the easiest way to go. And Avery will look to all of your fabulousness to usher us in the directions we are intended to go in. And um, maybe I could just be left with Rochelle for a minute so we could get oriented for the, for the plenary room. Yeah, sounds and good. Just so, no Central Coast, I'll make my way at the appropriate time. Great, so I'm gonna open all the breakout rooms now. Um, they're set for 80 minutes and there will be some reminders throughout to let us know that the time is counting down. There also will be a timer in the room. Um, and a reminder to Strategic Earth staff to uh, manually move department staff into the room that they're in with you. Department staff, please don't touch. Okay. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. 
Um, I have to remind myself to record. I'm just looking at Sarah Warden specifically, but Chen Chen too. Let's remind me to do that when we're together. It's going to be so great. Okay, Rochelle, I'm so happy to see you. Just know everyone, you'll just usher your way as you can. Um, I just wanted to share on your end, knowing that it's really up to you. How are you feeling? Would you like to be in Central Coast or would you like to stand? I was just thinking you could have a little bit of downtime. In I love Italy. you. I'm eating a chocolate lovely. bar. And just, yeah, helping on this end sounds great. Okay, great. 